Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? It is currently 11.24 p.m. on this absolutely beautiful Thursday evening going into Friday. And it is currently 68 degrees outside. It's very warm. It's a warm 68. It was like 82 today. It was absolutely beautiful. I just left my brother and sister-in-law's um, a little while ago. It was Carlos's birthday today. So when Alex got off work, we went over there and they made us pizza. Um, they had a cheese pizza just for me and the kids. And then um, Carlitos and Sebastian love like Sour Patch Kids. So I stopped at the gas station and got them some Sour Patch Kids. And they were super excited about that. But they were only allowed to have a few of them before bed. And then... Um, yeah, and then they had all kinds of nice food out. They had hummus and pita chips and cheese and salami. I didn't eat any of salami, but cheese with crackers and tortilla chips and salsa and this kind of guacamole. It was kind of like, kind of more of like a green verde. Um, is that what it's called? I don't know. Like that green salsa, it was kind of more like that. Um, it was like spicy kind of guac salsa. And then um, Carlos had a Oreo ice cream cake, because that's its favorite, supposedly, which was really good. I had two small uh, pieces of that, and um, it was fun. We had a really good time. We just sat around and talked. And then right as Alex and I were getting ready to leave, um, one of their friends that used to live with them um, stopped by. So it was good to see him because I hadn't seen him since Liliana's birthday. And um, he's kind of like part of the family. He and his brother used to live with Carlos and Liliana. And they're really, really nice guys. And um, his brother is married now. And so he just stopped by after work. Usually it, it ends up being like you know, 20 people. But it was just us tonight and it was really nice. So just a small little family gathering. And it was fun. The kids were showing us all of their, like, uh, trophies and awards they had gotten for sports recently. Um, Sebastian is doing soccer, and Carlitos is doing football and baseball. And what is starting? He has baseball camps this summer that he's doing. He's really excited about that. He's supposedly, like, a really, really good baseball player. But Carlos grew up being a really good baseball player, too. And um, still, Carlos still plays um, baseball on a league. And um, he helps coach Carlitos' team. So, um, yeah. So they were just kind of filling us in on school and everything like that. It was fun. We had a good time. I got up today early, took a shower, got ready. That's why I have this shirt on again. I wore it, uh, what night did I wear this? I can't remember, but anyway. Um, to go to the doctor's appointment today. Went to the doctor's appointment. Um, so, it was a very quick appointment. He checked me out. I didn't even think about this, but he was like, is your leg hurting? And I said, no. And he was like, well, last year when it was hurting, because I don't remember... So I don't remember anything that he told me last year. He explained it all to me again today. I don't remember, but it was between like the four and five or the six and seven. Do y'all remember that last year? Cause some people related to that and were like, oh yeah, I have the same thing. That's what it was last year, which was why it was like the pain was radiating down the left side and down my leg. And my leg was like becoming numb and stuff. And that's why he did the injection that he did last year. Today, when I went in, I, I explained to him what it feels like and that it's like, almost kind of like, you know when you have pain in your rib cage, but like lower down? It's almost kind of like that, but in my back. I could That's the only way I could explain it. And he said, so it's in the middle, like not the middle of my, the lower middle of my back going across. And I said, yes. And he said, okay, that's more of what Alex had. And so he did some tests and he explained to me what it was. I have no idea what he explained to me. Um, he went into great depth explaining it to me, but I don't remember. Um, so I could get the information. I, 
if anybody is really greatly interested. But he said the two things that we could do were that we could do um, a steroid pack and try that to see if that would help. Or we could go in, and I was kind of coming in with the idea that I was gonna have this injection because of the injection that I had last year, it helped so much. And Alex had had, um, it's like a block, it's an epidural block, kind of block, he said, or something. Um, and so that's what Alex had, and he goes, you're gonna, if we do the injection with you, it's gonna be the exact same thing that Alex had which it should take care of it. I did ask him if it was because of my weight. And he said, while I think that it would greatly improve your health to be active, he goes, I'm not as concerned about your weight as I am concerned about you being active. He said, you're, you're overweight. He said, obviously, he said, but, and he was very nice about it. But he said, I'm more concerned with you being active because you're sitting in the same position all day long. And he said, and that's part of what contributed to Alex's pain as well. So it's very similar. When people have that pain, it's because they sit in a chair all day long. He said, if you would get up and take a walk for like a half an hour or an hour every day or every other day um, or you started doing some like cardio act, you know activity that would really really help um, he said but I have pe Peter he said I have pe people that are very thin that have the exact same issues as you do so no it's not a weight issue so I was like okay um, but he said you know he was we talked about because we're the same exact exactly the same age and um, you know he said but you know He's gotten very healthy recently, and he was telling me about his, you know, journey doing that and how that would be great for me and stuff. So this whole situation has been kind of inspiring, which is <laughs> obviously why I had two pieces of Oreo ice cream cake tonight. But anyway, so I said, what do you think I should do? And he said, we can do the steroid if you want to do that, but I think we're just going to prolong having to actually do the block or the injection, so we should just go in and do the injection if you're willing to do that. Um, and so I was like, let's just do it. And um, so, yeah. It was interesting because that was the first time that I have been to any kind of medical environment in the last couple months, I think, right? And they were, I mean, you had to have like a mask when you came to the door, like when you came right to the door of the building, they took your temperature. They were so like safe about the whole thing. I was so impressed with it. And um, they have like guarded rooms now that they didn't have before where you go and you pay and you sign in and all that kind of stuff. And then they're like very careful about like having so many people in the hallway at the same time. I just was really impressed with the, the whole way that they handled it um, and all that kind of stuff. So um, like not letting more than like, I think it was like two people in the elevator at the same time together and stuff like that. I just was really impressed with how the whole thing was handled. So anyway, um, so I was like, okay, let's do it. The only, so we ended up doing the injection today and um, I said, is it gonna hurt more than the one the last time? And he goes, oh no, 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 it will be, it will be easier than the one last time. That was not true. <laughs> it hurt a little bit more this time, um, but what hurt was him numbing the area. The, the actual shot, I didn't feel at all. He was like, here we go, and then it was like over. I didn't feel that at all. The numbing is what hurt, so yeah and then he was like you know you don't because he had told me before i was like well do, am i going to need somebody to drive me home and so he was like no you'll be completely fine whatever i didn't feel any different before than i did after um my back still hurts it didn't hurt as much towards the end of the day but i was taking a leave so that helped um and yeah and so he set up an appointment for two weeks because he said in two weeks I should feel much better. So I'm gonna have a follow-up appointment in two weeks. And he told me, he said, you know, you can just call me on the phone if things are 100% better. And we can talk on the phone and just do the evaluation that way if you don't wanna come in. He said, you can cancel your appointment, but I'd like to have an appointment in case things are not better because then we're gonna have to discuss other options. And um, so he talked about something about, 
that I have a degenerative disc. That's what happened last year. And because of a result of the degenerative disc, which he said is a lot of people as they get older start having that. He said, but it also has to do with how you sit and the, the pressure you're putting on it and things like that. He said, you're gonna continue to probably have back problems here going out. And so part of it is you having to be as healthy as you possibly can be. But he goes, you're gonna, I mean, this is gonna probably be an ongoing thing. I just wanna prepare you for that. And I was like, okay. So anyway, the appointment went better than I thought it would. I was like literally out of there in 45 minutes. I couldn't believe it. Um, and he was fantastic. So yeah, and then um, I was so relaxed and last night I had done my vlog and I had done my review video and I was uploading them while I was gone because I gotten up early enough that I started rendering them and uploading them that then I, um, so I was like, okay, I don't have to rush home because I wanted to make a bunch of videos today, which I ended up making total, I, I posted a total of, well, six videos, but my video for tomorrow for my drama channel, I pre-filmed because it's a sponsored video and they had to approve it. So they had to see it first, the, just the beginning part of it. So it's kind of like an opinions Q&A video. Um, so that's my video for tomorrow, which is good because I have a recovery commitment in the afternoon at two, and then I have a hair appointment at 3.15, which I hope I get to in time. Um, and so then I won't get out of there until probably 4.15 and get home at like 4.45 or five, which then that's when I'll be starting my videos unless I get up super early, which I think we know that probably won't happen and start filming videos in the morning. So we'll just see what happens. So uh, I'm, I'm happy that I have a video to post on my drama channel tomorrow at least, and then I can do a review either on my way or on my way home from my hair appointment. And then I can do a Peterisms video when I get home and then I'll have my vlog and that will be what I need to do. And then if I feel like doing a Peter Does Stuff video, then I can. I posted one today, I kind of hadn't expected to do it. Um, I did one on watering the plants out front. <laughs> it was kind of a fun video to do. So after my doctor's appointment, I talked to my cousin Caroline on the phone and then I was driving to Tanya's because I thought she was at the kennel working, but she had actually just left Menards. And so she said, stop by the house and sit on the back patio with me for a little bit. So I went to her house and I sat on the back patio for like 20 minutes with her and just kind of like talked and I was drinking my Diet Coke and she had gotten a fountain pop um, from the gas station. So it was so nice today. It was just like, I could have just sat outside all day long. Tanya was like, I wish the pool was open this weekend because we could go to the pool and just sit outside. I was like, I know. So that was, oh, and then after that, I came home, and honestly, at that point, I was so tired. I was like, I wanna film these videos, but I'm so tired, I should lay down, and then I should get up, but I had done my hair, and so I was kind of like not wanting to wear a hat, I was kind of just wanting to look nice with my shirt on and have my hair done, and so I was like, um, whatever, but, uh, so I, sat down and I filmed the video for tomorrow and then I did a Peterisms video and then I did the review. Uh, I had already got the review video. I was getting them all up. I did a booktube video announcing my new book for June because somebody had asked me if I would start posting it in the middle of the month so give them time to get it from the library which was fine. I think it's a good idea. So I did that and um, it's Mexican Gothic and um, it's by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. I'm really excited about it. So that is the June book for um, Peter's Book Club. The June book for, uh, the June book for the True Crime, a True Crime Book Club is, um, do you know what, I wanted to pull in here and just kind of read some comments because I haven't done that in a couple days. So I'm gonna pull in over here and see. Um, the True Crime Book Club, a, a True Crime Book Club book pick for June is The Babysitter by Liza, somebody, Liza Holdman and Jennifer Jordan, am I close? If I'm close, I'll die, I can't believe it. So yeah, that's what I did um, for my booktube video. I, put, I said that in my booktube video and posted it. And then what else did I do? I'm gonna pull into this little Fisher's District here. I don't think I've ever parked here before. And um, then I filmed a drama video for today. There really wasn't a lot of drama going on, but I wanted to do something because I just love making videos on that channel so much. So I filmed that and got that up. And yeah, that was about that. And then what else? I can't even remember. Where should I pull in? 
right here next to the 1933 lounge. And then, oh, then I lay down, fed the dogs, laid down for a little bit, sat on my front porch, read a little bit of my graphic novel. You brought me the ocean. I'm, 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 I think I'm like three fourths done with that. I'm almost done with that. It. It's really good. Um, and then it's, but it's like a superhero story and I don't really love superhero stories. Do you guys know this whole area in here? It's so pretty, isn't it? Fisher's District. Um, and then I lay down for like a half an hour and by that point it was like 7.30. Did I leave my glasses at their house? No, thank God. Um, I laid down at like 7.30 and... Got up at like 8 o'clock and then I headed over to their house and I stopped at the gas station and I got a fountain pop on the way. I got a Dr. Pepper. I don't know why I've been craving Dr. Pepper so much lately, but I have. All right. Let's see the comments. This will be interesting tonight. Peter Vlogs. It's been up for three hours and 40 minutes. Three hours and 41 minutes, actually. Okay. Bill D said, Peter never says hi to me or my tweets. Bitter and bitter in the house. So I said hi. <laughs> said it back to her. 1972 Go said, Peter, you are gracious in your response to the nosy. Simply put, live and let live. You are such a huge inspiration to so many. Love you. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Lisa Gay Blue Hearts. Hey, Lisa. Karen Gay Blue Hearts. Hey, Karen. <laughs> Melissa gave a uh, hello, 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 and a blue heart. Um, okay, let's go on. Beth said, I asked how you quit smoking, but wasn't me because I was referring back to you saying you quit. That was my fault you said one night about when you were young. And I knew what you were talking about. Now, I wasn't upset about that at all. I wasn't really upset about anybody bringing it up. It just is a fact of my life, you know. You were young and smoked with friends. I assumed you quit. I've smoked since I was 12 and am now 59. And nowadays, folks make you feel so guilty about bad about it. Truth be told, I enjoy to smoke. Sorry if I made you. You didn't make me feel bad. No, and it wasn't that. It just was that... Every once in a while, and I know that's why, because I'll say in here, you know, like, oh, my friends and I were driving around smoking cigarettes, or, you know, I'll say something about, like, oh, I sat with, you know, Tanya back in the day, and we would smoke cigarettes or whatever or at a meeting, and then I think people assume that I have fully quit, and I don't want that to be the, the message. I don't want people to think that, you know, because that's not the truth. So, um, no, but that didn't upset me at all. No, sweetie, you don't worry about that. Your message was fine. Your, your question was fine. Um... Troy said, I love those one more I love yous. Good, because I do them for you and Karen, mostly. Because <laughs> you're the only ones that ask for them. He said, I am so sorry that you had to deal with all that stuff. You are an amazing person. I tell you all the time, don't worry about what other people say. You have people who love and care about you. And I'm glad that you are my amazing friend, Peter. Thank you, good Judy. Troy, I appreciate it. Diana put a bunch of blue hearts and uh, emojis. Um... Katie said, I didn't have a good day. How was your day, Peter? My day's been pretty good. I'm sorry that you haven't had a good day, sweetheart. I hope it gets better. Um, Paula said, Peter, you have a cigarette if you so please. I don't see a correlation between having a smoke and your sobriety. There isn't one. There isn't one. That's just the facts right there. These people, okay, I'm not going to get into that, but thank you so much for that. She said, imagine if them judging you affected your sobriety. They are trying to bring you down. Well, here's the thing, though, I will say about that, okay? And I can only speak for me because I see this a lot online with people. And I'm just speaking for me. First of all, when you come for somebody's sobriety, I really, truly do believe this. 
When you come for somebody's sobriety, you are wishing death on that person. Because to an addict or an alcoholic that is in recovery, to question that, okay? And I'm not saying in a heartfelt way. I'm not saying as a family member or a friend. I think you have a right. If you are a family member or a friend of an addict or an alcoholic and they are acting out of sorts or they're acting like in ways that you're that's not typical or they stopped going to meetings or they're not going to counseling or whatever they've been doing that's worked for them and you're seeing things happen that weren't how they used to do it, I think as, oh, there's a couple out here and they are making out, okay. I think it's completely fair as a family member or a friend to reach out and say, hey, I'm worried about you, you know? If somebody that watches my videos even reached out to me and said, dot, 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 you know, like, hey, this concerns me or whatever, um, I wouldn't have an issue with that, okay? To be like, gee, this makes me so sad because he's always prided himself on having 26 years of sobriety. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. We're not gonna do this, okay? I mean, it, we're just not gonna do that. But the thing is this, okay? I take full responsibility for my sobriety. And I think that the majority, I can't speak for people that aren't in 12-step programs because I don't live that life. But in 12-step programs, we are taught that I cannot get somebody sober and I can't make them drink, okay? I can't make them get sober and I can't make them drink. Just like somebody can't make me sober and somebody can't make me drink. That's on me and my higher power. So I can't blame or put responsibility on somebody else. I did make a comment like a couple years ago that I felt like my recovery, I, something was going on, I can't remember, and I said something at the time, and it got kind of twisted, and I said something like, I feel like my recovery is at risk. And what I meant was, I didn't feel safe in that moment. Like, I felt like I wasn't healthy, I wasn't taking care of myself. I didn't put that on somebody else, so was, I didn't mean to at the time. If I if it came across that way, that wasn't my what I meant by that at all. Oh, my husband's calling me. Hold on just a second. This is important though, so hold on. Okay, I'm back. He was just going to bed. So anyway, I wanted to finish up with what I was saying about that because it's important and um, I should probably, uh, well, I should probably wait and drive and talk about it. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I should come back to that one. But remind me that I want to talk about um, that I can't get somebody sober and I can't make them drink. I don't have that power. And um, I think it's a manipulative tool at times that addicts use when they go back out and they'll say, oh, you made me do this or you made me do that or you made me relapse or whatever. Nobody has that power over me as an addict. Um, at the end of the day, I'm the person that chooses to use if I use. Are there things that are critical to my recovery that if they happen or if I'm going through a lot of stress or if there's tragedy that's happened in my life or if I feel like people are coming at me, you know, all that kind of stuff that um, a drink sounds good or a drug sounds good or I think about, um, you know, maybe, <laughs> screw it, I'm gonna go use. More in early sobriety than today, and I'm, that's why I'm very, very careful with people in early sobriety. I always say things like, don't engage a lot in social media. It's not worth it. Um, set limits and boundaries with people. If you're having a conversation with you know, your mom or somebody and you can feel yourself get, getting tense to the point where it's like, okay, I'm gonna wanna drink because as addicts and alcoholics, that's what we do, see? This is why I think there's this misconception that being an addict or an alcoholic is really about the substance. It's really not. The substance is but an issue. You, or is but a, the substance is but a symptom um, of the, the disease. And so what happens is we have all these internal issues, right? And our go-to for that is drinking and drugging. So when you're taking care of the internal issues that are going on, you don't have the need to drink and drug anymore, which is why we work these steps, which is why we turn our life and our will over to a higher power, which is why we do a major inventory, a fear, searching the fearless moral inventory of our life. And we look at all the resentments we have and all the fears that we have and all of our, you know, know, sexual conduct and our personal character and conduct on that. And then we share that with another human being and we look at what is our part in that because we can ultimately only sh control our part. And then we go on to step six and seven where we look at our character defects and we work on those character defects. And then in steps eight, we make a list of people we had we had harmed, became willing to make amends to them all. And then in step nine, we go and we rectify those situations that typically come from step four of those people that we had resentments towards and anger towards. And we go to them and we right our wrongs and we make things right, whether that's through a just, hey, I need to make an amends for the ways that I treated you, or <clears throat> financial amends, or whatever, you know? 
And then once you make your amends, then you go to step 10, which is taking a daily inventory in your life. And um, step 11 is, you know, prayer and meditation, conscious uh, com conversations with your higher power. And step 12 is, you know, as a result of having a spiritual awakening, you know, we live this life, I'm trying to kind of say it in simpler terms, we present to other people, we are a representative of what a life of recovery looks like. And we practice these principles in all of our affairs. And um, and that's where service work comes in as well. Carry this message to the other alcohol, the new alcoholic coming in, new the new addict or alcoholic coming in. So when you look at it that way, if there's all this stuff going on around me that's making me think, I want to drink, I want to do, I need to go to somebody like my sponsor, like my support system. I need to go to a meeting and share that and say, this is what's going on with me. I just talked about this yesterday. It's talking about telling on myself, telling my truth, telling what I'm going through, because then it doesn't have as much power. And not only that, but then my support system, they don't say, they don't, like my sponsor never says to me, <clears throat> Well, maybe she has. That so-and-so isn't, you know, an a-hole or, you know, forget this person or whatever. I mean, she's said that every once in a while. But typically what she'll say to me is, what's your part in this? You know, like, what is your part in this? Because, see, I can't control everybody else. I can only control um, my part, you know? And, oh, Tanya's texting me. And so I have to be careful that I'm taking care of myself. So, you know... Yes, I'm concerned about addicts and alcoholics online. I think one of the things is that a lot of people in early sobriety, like, I don't... I, it's weird because I didn't get sober with social media. So I don't know what it would be like. But I feel like a lot of people want to jump online, like, especially people that have some kind of following, want to jump online very quickly and say they're sober, you know, without having really some time under their belt or you know and then it's people are going to criticize that or say well wh okay i stopped it because tanya was calling in um it's like the demi lovato california lifestyle that everybody's talking about this california lifestyle and you know uh, moderative use and whatever i don't live that lifestyle i i work a 12-step program i have tried moderation it doesn't work for me i can only speak of myself i can only share my experience strength and hope Moderation has not worked for me in my life. A 12-step program has worked. It has given me my life back. Um, so, you know, but I don't know, like... I, what I was going to say was, like, I think that's part of the, the criticism with, like, Demi Lovato. That Demi Lovato has shared uh, about this California sober and is very new to sobriety. Whether it's going to work or not, I don't think we know at this point. But... When people are new to sobriety and you put that out there a lot, people want to criticize it. Well, on top of being criticized for what you're putting out there, because you just want to share like, hey, I'm sober or I'm doing something different or I'm trying to live a better life. People are critical of that. And then on top of the, crit the criticism, you're also majorly stressed out because you're newly sober. I wasn't like in the right headspace for my first couple months. And, you know, like for my first year, I really struggled, you know, with that drink and drug like wanting to use and had to call people and go. I mean, I was going to a lot of meetings. I've gone to so many meetings in my life because when things get tough, that's what I know that works for me. Going to meetings talking to my sponsor, having a support system around me, being honest with my husband about what's going on, staying in the texts, and most importantly, getting out of myself and being of service to others. That is what helps me the most, you know? So I can't blame other people for creating situations that make me feel more like a drink sounds good. Does that make sense? Like, it's ultimately my responsibility. I am responsible for my sobriety. So I just want to make that clear. But that being said, <clears throat> when people put out some hateful stuff online and I have seen it where people call each other names and stuff like that, you know, I mean, like, this is the thing. It's been a long time since anybody's wanted to call me a crackhead. Call me a crackhead, okay? Because I used to smoke crack. You do that if that's what you need to do. But when you're calling me that name, realize one thing about it, okay? It really doesn't affect me that much anymore. La the back of the day, it riled me up. I don't know why. <laughs> you I was. But it's like when you're doing that and you're putting somebody down, instead of saying, hey, I don't really like you very well, and I don't think that maybe you're a good person, but I hope you stay sober. I wish you the best on your sobriety, you know? 
Instead of saying that, to belittle somebody and call them names, you're wishing death on that addict, period, end of story. Because for that addict to go back out and use is probably gonna be death. Because I know a lot of addicts that have gone back out and have never made it back into the rooms of recovery or never have gotten out of a hospital sober again because they went back out and they started using and it killed them, you know? I don't, that stuff's not funny to me. I don't joke about it. It's, it's everything that I live so when I see those statements, like, you lose my respect very, very quickly when anybody says something like that. Because I feel like if you don't like somebody, there are so many things that you can say about them other than coming for a substance issue or a mental health issue. I just don't understand it. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't, it just, it makes me very sad. So, okay, well, I went on and on about that for a while. All right, charging my phone. Um... Oh my God, Tanya, <laughs> she texted me after I talked to her. Okay, let's go on to see the other comments. Um, Jean said, thank you for sharing your stories, Peter. I love listening to you every day. Um, Sean said, Peter, believe in yourself. You can achieve whatever you put your mind to. We are rooting for you. We're rooting for you. <laughs> and we love you too. Thank you, Sean. Um, Uh, Kim said, Alex is 100% correct. Miserable and hateful people will try to tear you down no matter how much you try to change. They are miserable, lonely trolls. But they don't see it that way at all. That's really kind of the sad thing about it is that they really don't see it. At that. I mean, if they really took a good look at themselves and realized, maybe I'm not a happy person. You know, maybe I find glee and happiness in tearing somebody else down. What's that about? What does that say about me? You know? Like, that's sad. Why do I do that? Instead of engaging in things that make me happy. Well, that makes me happy to tear somebody else down. And if making, if, if tearing somebody else down makes you happy, it's really about you. It really doesn't say anything about me whatsoever, you know? It, it's really a sad statement, honestly. But anyway, um, okay, there's so many. Jill said, I understand you wanting to address this and shut down people questioning recovery. That is crazy and uncalled for that they did that. I have learned in my lifetime that it's best to address the issue, make your point, and then put a period after it. I agree. I probably should have done that. I'm afraid with you spending over half your vlog talking about the, that those people are going to feel they won and that and got you bothered and worked up. It is not worth it. The people you, that enjoy you got the point and are paying the negativity no mind. And I really appreciate that, Jill. And I probably did pay more attention to it than I needed to. If uh, the people feel like they won, so be it. I'm not in any kind of competition. This is my life. I'm just sharing my truth. You won. <laughs> I hope you're happy. Okay. Um, but you're right about that. I love this statement. Stacy said, you work so hard on your mental health and growth. I'm sure you can do the same with your body. You're absolutely 100% correct. And that's the way that I need to think about it. I really appreciate that comment. Um, Donna said, I think setting a 20 pound goal at any weight is an excellent idea. Yep, I've been doing the five pound goals. It takes time, but I'm happy with each accomplishment. That's what worked for me. You're right. Um, oh, Amy said, I hope that your appointment goes well. Hope you're back. We'll start to heal. Thank you so much, Amy. Julie and WB12, all blue hearts. Hi, Peter. Hello, hello, hello from Amy. Hi, Peter from Amy. <laughs> and Teresa, blue heart, smiley face, blue heart. And Andrew said, love you, Peter. I think he was number one. So there you go. Is that it? Is that, well, there's a lot of comments, but they're really long comments. So, um...
Joel, Joel Atal said, okay, also next time you're in San Diego, can we please do a food tour collab? LOL, I'm serious. I'll take you guys to all my favorite vegan spots and you can show me the places you like down here too. Okay, so since you're from San Diego, yes, I will definitely do that. My brother-in-law, Fufu, Juan Carlos, lives out there with his girlfriend, Jesse. So we're probably planning a trip out there in the fall. Um, and I, my favorite place out there is Breakfast Revolution. I loved it. Oh my God, they're the ones that have the soy chorizo. And, um, okay, I'm not gonna read this one because she said she didn't wanna, um, <laughs> out her employment online, but that was an interesting comment. I wonder if that is the one that I'm, talk that I'm talking about, but anyway, who said this? Because I want to make sure that you know, okay. Oh, it's the same person, I shouldn't say anything. <laughs> Different comment, same person. Yeah, and then there was another restaurant, and I can't remember what it was called, but it was a woman's name, and it had like these curtains that kind of like flowed, and it was so fun, and it was very like hippie vibe. These restaurants in San Diego are so hippie vibe, I absolutely love them. So, um, uh, so yeah, I'm going to change my battery really quick and then I'm going to come out of here and get on the, I have to go to the bathroom so bad, but there's not really any place to stop around here. So I'm going to, um, change the battery cause it's like halfway and I don't know when it's going to die. So I'm going to get change. I have the battery and then I'm going to, I can put my glasses away, I guess. Um, I'm going to get on the interstate and drive for a little bit and then I'm going to find a gas station and go <laughs> to the bathroom and get something to drink and then I'm going to listen to a little uh, Misfortune. I'm not, okay, here's the thing with the Misfortune book, you guys. It's so good. It's so good. I feel like I'm home again. The Misfortune, uh, Fortune, Fun House. It's book 19. It's so happy. It makes me so happy. Now, I will tell you, somebody recommended to me, <clears throat> I think it was on this channel, to, I just bought two books, two new books last night. Someone recommended to me to get these Anne George books. There's like eight of them in a series, and it's about two sisters, and they look so hilarious. So I bought the first one last night. It was called Murder on Girls' Night. And um, so, yeah. I'm looking at all these books that I bought that I I need to do an Audible haul on my booktube channel. I've been meaning to do that for a while. I finally did the kitchen counter one, and then today I did the one announcing my book. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, the thing I wanted to say about the Misfortune book, can I turn here? I don't remember if I can turn here. Is this the Ikea exit? Um, is that, so I'm on book 19, which is Fortune Fun House, and it is, oh my God, here's that Shake Shack that I've been wanting to go to. It is so good, you guys. But like, I'm halfway done with it, and I don't want it to be over, because then I'm gonna have to wait like another two or three months for the next one to come out. And although I have books this summer that I'm really excited about, um, I have, that are in series. I have the second book in, um, it's a Bad Day for Sunshine. The next one is called It's a Good Day for Chardonnay. And it, that one is by Dorinda Jones. And I'm really excited about that. Um, then there's another book in another series that I'm excited about reading. Plus, The Misfortune Book 20 is going to come out. It's already out. Um, the audio version is going to come out in probably a month or two. So I'll have that one to read when it comes out. And I also think she has a whole series in Mudbug, which is a city that's like close to Sinful, Louisiana. And it's about a woman who <clears throat> her mother-in-law died and now she haunts her and they like solve cases together or something. So I'm, I don't know if, does anybody like those? I'm thinking about maybe starting those. And then I downloaded that Ann George book um, cause that was recommended to me. So I don't know, you know, like, but it's hard because I, my back is starting to hurt a little bit, like worse than it was. Probably from sitting in this car all damn day. But I am sitting in that chair filming videos. Um, I, feel so happy listening to the book. Like, I am just so incredibly happy. I'm like, well, I don't want it to end. So I'm kind of like slowly listening to it. I listen to a little bit here, listen to a little bit there. But like, I could have powered through that book in a day and a half, in all honesty. And I'm just like, when I go to listen to the book during the day, I turn on music instead because I'm like, well, I don't want the book to be over. I'm not ready for it to be over yet. 
There's lip gloss. We'll use some lip gloss. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. I sat on my front porch a lot today. It was really nice. I've been taking the dogs for a little bit of a walk down the street, and Boo Radley hates walking on the leash, but he's starting to get kind of used to it a little bit. <clears throat> like, when I put them on the leash at first, um, like, he runs around. Like, Tucker's very good about it, um, but Boo Radley, like, runs all over the house until I put this harness thing on him, and he doesn't like it. So, um... Boo Rally doesn't like it. Tucker's totally fine with it. But he's getting used to it and it's kind of cute because he'll run into the kitchen and then he'll run in the living room while I'm doing Tucker. Then I'll come, I'll go, Boo Radley, come here. And then he kind of hides out over by the chair and the couch right where we sit. And then he like looks at me and I'll go, come here, honey, come here and sit down. And he'll come real slow and then he'll sit down right in front of me and he lets me put it on him. It's very, very sweet. They knew I was not feeling well. This morning I woke up and I was like, oh, I mean, I was like physically like, oh, and they were being so sweet to me, those little guys. They knew that their dad did not feel good this morning. So I think dogs can sense that, don't you? And you know what? All day long, I kind of felt like I was like lagging. I just was like, I cannot get any energy today. I didn't know what it was. And I don't know if this makes a difference because sometimes I'm real tired after it. But then I was, what is with the light tonight? I think it's the color of my shirt. Sometimes if I wear a blue shirt, the color of the video looks red. Do you guys see it? It's real weird. If I turn on the light, it's, no, it's still bad. Um, I never got coffee today. On the way to the appointment, the doctor's appointment, I took a, a Coke in the koozie. And then I just... I didn't drink much of it on the way there, so I brought it back inside and I drank that throughout the... No, 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 no. When I was doing my drama video, I got a second one. So that was my second Diet Coke of the day. And then I got a Dr. Pepper. Ooh, that's a lot of soda, isn't it? <laughs> that's a lot of soda! But it was good. I'm not going to beat myself up about it anymore. A nice oh now it's 72 outside it's warmer than it was when i was vlogging earlier well that was probably because i was on the side streets and the trees and now i'm on the interstate and it's 72. i wonder what it's going to be like tomorrow it's supposed to be like 87 by this weekend can you even believe it this landscaping person i want to have so much faith in them i just don't think they're real excited about doing the job part of the problem is that our area is so small. Now, I will tell you, the doctor told me, he said, I don't want you bending over and, do, and picking up anything heavy. I don't want you bending over for a long period of time with your back. So, <clears throat> I literally now, I can't do the yard, the front walk. So, we have to have somebody to do it. Although, tomorrow, I am going to take these huge sticky weeds down and mustard plant because it just looks so bad. But... You know, you would think that we would know somebody that was like a college kid that would like in the neighborhood that would want to do it. You know, like I, we can't find anybody. We literally can't find anybody. And the one person that I did find, <clears throat> well, we had somebody, but they quoted us some ridiculous amount of money and I'm not paying that. The person that we did find was like a large company and they had actually done it for us like eight years ago because they had me in the system and so she was like yeah i'll have the person call you and do an estimate and so the person called me she was very very nice but i called on like thursday of last week and or wednesday and she called me on tuesday of this week of which i called her back because it was like i didn't get the message so late so i called her back on wednesday and she had just asked some questions about what we wanted and i said yeah she knew exactly what we wanted because I had left the message for her before. And so she was asking some of the same questions. And so I said, yeah, that's exactly what we want, blah, blah, blah. We just want the hostess cleaned up. We want this, we want that. 
And I said, if you could just call me back and let me know when you might be out here to do the estimate. And, you know, if it's going to be a week, I totally understand that you guys are busy. If it's going to be a month, just let me know, you know, and we'll see if we can find somebody else. But like, you know, just let me know when you think you can come out here and do the estimate and when you think that you might be able to, um, I mean, the estimate should have been done by now. And when do you, do you think, she knew my address, like, and everything. Like, she knew, it was like she knew the house. Like, she'd done other people in our neighborhood. So, because when she was explaining it to me, she's like, yeah, it's a walk with, like, two sides. And, you know, it's, like, 20 feet on each side. And I was like, okay, she knows our house. And so, I mean, sh shouldn't she be able to figure out an estimate from that? I don't know. Maybe. And so, when I called her back, I said, can you just give me a call and let me know when you're going to, you know, do the estimate. And when you think that if you could do it, when that would happen, and if that's going to be, you know, two weeks from now or a month from now or two months from now, just let me know and we'll decide if that's what we want to go with or not. No response. <laughs> two days, no response. Tani has a theory that because everybody has been stuck inside for the last year, that everybody is spending a mass amount of money fixing their landscaping this year. And so these landscapers are really, really busy in a way that they weren't other years. I don't know if that's true, but you would think that we could find somebody that would just be willing to come and mulch it and weed it. You know, when I was growing up, now, my dad had professional landscapers, um, but he has a lot more land than my mom had when I was growing up. When I was growing up, my mom always had, like, the neighborhood kid mow the yard. And, um, like, it was literally, like, our neighbor. It was, like, two brothers. And, like, when I was, like, younger, they were probably 16, 17, 18, you know, home from summers and college. And they would mow the lawns and stuff like that in the neighborhood and, you know, get paid 20 or 30 bucks to mow a lawn. So it's interesting to me that there's nobody that's like, you know, just small business that would want to do it, but we can't find anybody. I like put something up on Facebook and then I like, I've asked every one of my friends and everybody's like, no, we don't know anybody that would, you know, and everybody's like, well, it's just a really small yard that you guys have. So they probably don't want to do that, you know? The guy that's gonna do our patio, he said, what did he, like I said, how much do you think it's gonna cost total? Well, okay, so when he power washes it, it's gonna pull up the paint. And he said the paint is already coming up. And he said, you need to have your patio probably repainted every two years. So I was like, okay, I'll pay for it just to make it look really, really nice because we wanna have a nice patio this summer and then this summer, next summer will be nice and then we'll know the following summer, save the money, you know, and have it done have to do that you know so he was really nice too and he's uh the husband he owns a contracting firm or whatever he is the husband of one of alex's friends and so he came out just and was like hey this is what we do and i said something to him about how the estimate he kind of laughed he goes your patio is so small that if i charge you for the job we won't make any money off of what's worth it so i'm gonna have to charge you for the hour so that my guys when they do it can actually make some money off of it and i was like that was totally fine you know like i understand that he's like yeah it'll probably take a day and a half if the weather's really nice he's gonna come out alex told me tonight next tuesday or wednesday and do the patio so then it'll take, he said, like two or three days for it to completely uh, dry. And then we can put the patio furniture out there and I can go get plants and I can do the patio. And then that will be my Peter Dust step on that channel, which will be real exciting. So, um, yeah, I'm excited about that because we have a solution in place, you know. But with this landscaping, it's just becoming this huge issue. I just, when I felt better... I wish I would have just done it myself. It's literally nothing. We've done it before, and like Alex and I doing it together, it takes like max like two hours, and it looks gorgeous when we're done with it. So I wish we had just done it. I just didn't want to go to the store and haul all of the mulch. I mean, like that is one of the things with like the landscaping company is that they can just bring mulch like in the big truck, you know? and just have it right there and like dump it in the driveway and like shovel it where they need to shovel it. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Construction. Road work, merge right. 
So tomorrow, like I said, I have a recovery commitment and then I have um, I have a recovery commitment and then I have um, my haircut at 315. I'm trying to think of what else. I don't remember if Alex said that we have anything to do tomorrow afternoon. I think that Melissa and Jason's niece has already left. We were gonna try to have dinner with her one more time, but I think she already left. Right lane closed ahead. This is weird, these lane closures. So um, I think she already left. So I don't know if we have anything we're gonna do this week. Oh, I need to text my friend Erin. She had asked about possibly doing brunch on Sunday. She likes Ruth's Cafe. Um, I'm going to text her back tomorrow. I've been meaning to text her. I forgot all day. Has ever happened to you like when you're in the middle of stuff? Like what, this always happens to me when I'm filming videos. I'll get like five texts and two phone calls while I'm filming videos. And it like never typically happens to me. Like I don't get a lot of phone calls or texts. If you looked at my phone, it's literally like... Tanya Alex, Tanya Alex, my sponsor, Tanya Alex, and a couple of my other friends, Caroline, and a couple of my other friends, right? Like, I never get text messages and phone calls from people. And then when I'm filming, and I kind of film back to back, you know? Like, I'll film the Peterisms video, and then I'll render it, and then I'll, while I'm rendering it, I'm filming the booktube video and getting it ready and doing the, you know, it's like I'm constantly doing stuff. So I don't really look at my phone except for like receipts and stuff, right? That I'm using for my drama video or like reading a Goodreads book or whatever. So, like, I'll go and I'll look at my phone and I'll have a ton of text messages or phone calls, not a ton, but you know, five text messages and two phone calls over the course of a couple hours. And, I'm, and then I forget to respond to all of them. And then I feel bad. So there's that. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think we have a whole lot going on this weekend. It's not a whole lot going on. Maybe I'll watch some TV. I've been meaning to get into watching some TV. I've got all my shows written down on my phone. So hopefully I'll get into that. Maybe this weekend it'll be so nice I can sit outside on the patio and do that. I might do that tonight if I decide that I'm not really in the mood for listening to my audiobook for a long time. I might go home and watch like an episode of them on the patio or something. So I think I'm gonna get off here now and um, I will uh, let you guys go. And um, if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. And I hope that you guys are having an a magically amazing Friday, the beginning to your weekend. Thank God it's Friday. And I love you guys so much. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya. Oh, and I'm not even going to stop the camera this time. I'm just going to say, for Troy and Karen and anybody else out there that needs to hear it, one more I love you. I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya.